carriers, they all seem to look the same these days, don't they? Apart from their livery, they seem to have the same trucks, the same cheery delivery people, smartly dressed, and they seem to be delivering the same parcels to all of us. But actually, underneath it all, they're all a little bit different. And retailers need to understand this because they can't use a single carrier to deliver all their traffic. Now, it isn't the retailer's fault. If you're a retailer, most of the time, your experience of delivery is delivering to your store. Or you may deliver to businesses, other businesses. Now, the thing is, let's think about this. B2B delivery means your customers are always there. The product you're selling is usually repeat business or you can package it very nicely because it's in bulk. If you don't get it there in time, you just have to simply ring the people up. You've got a good relationship with your customers and they'll say, come there tomorrow. Contrast that with consumers. You don't know what size the product is. It could be this size, this size, this size that you're selling. You don't know where it's going to. You've got no relationship with the customer and no communications channels. So if you're going to be late or there is a reroute or, or, or something out of the ordinary, guess what? You can't tell them. And, and if they are not very happy, off to Twitter they go. So in other words, B2B delivery is all about shifting boxes. Well, that's obvious. But B2C, delivering to consumers, is about delivering the brand because it's the brand experience that the customer gets when they open the box. If you do that wrongly, then you won't get repeat sales. So you might be saying to yourself, well, hold on, all my customers get their packages. Well, do they? Do they really get their packages first time? I'm not talking about the 70% on average that a retailer gets to their customer first time. I'm talking about the 30% that you have to manage. Think about it. Those ones that don't get to the customer first time or gets lost in the post, um, that's, the, that's the traffic that you need to manage. Do you know that every time you don't get a package to your customer first time, it costs. It can cost quite a lot. So you might have negotiated a simple three pound fee per delivery. Fantastic, you're very proud of yourself. But then when you get the bill at the end of the quarter, what happens is you have surcharges, address problems and all sorts, not, not forgetting things like returns um, and all those inbound calls you get from your customer service. So statistics actually show that for that very proud three pound delivery charge that you've uh, negotiated, actually it can turn into £250 loss if you don't get it there first time. And the reason for that is because not only do you have the surcharges from the carrier that has to find a way of re-delivering it, but also um, your customer themselves won't reorder. Um, and if they don't reorder, you lose up to four repeat sales over a period of three years. Now, at an average basket value of about £42, that's a lot of money. So just think of your basket value and how much you're going to lose by not doing delivery right. So how do you solve this? Well, the first thing you need to do is really understand about carriers. I started by saying that carriers are all different. And the reason for that is that once upon a time, carriers all used to deliver to businesses. It was very, very rare for a car carrier to go and deliver to a consumer a home. Remember those days when you used to get an Arctic lorry going down residential streets in the early days of e-commerce? Well, we don't want to repeat that. Clearly things have moved on, but carriers fundamentally are still set up in the same way as they used to uh, service their B2B clients. Now, some are better at fast deliveries, expedited deliveries. Some are better at um, locational services, so they're nearer to you to pick those up. Some have bigger trucks, some have smaller trucks. Some have conveyor belts, where between the conveyor belt, the little product will fall through, and vice versa. Some have big drops, so you have a big product which will break. So, if you take that into account, once you have, only then can you start comparing costs between different carriers and then you might have your own preference. Certain areas, better carriers. So that's why carriers can't do it all. And in fact, the poor carrier, most carriers, if you take a general, general view, I'm sure different carriers do different things, but a general view, carriers will make a good profit on about 45% of their, their deliveries. The next 30%, they'll break even. 
And then the last 25%, they can make a real loss. Sometimes the fuel is more than the delivery journey. So why do carriers offer all the services? Well, it's because retailers often say, I only want one carrier. I only want ca one carrier to do all of it without actually understanding their own delivery traffic, where it's going to, the type of customer. So the trick is to get great delivery. What you do is retain the relationship you have with the your main carrier that delivers perfectly the 70% of your deliveries and just simply find other carriers to fill in the gaps. So I'm not saying you're gonna get 100% first time delivery, but you can certainly aim at a very, very high 90s, which is great. If you do that well, then basically you'll be able to achieve your first time delivery. You'll be able to lower your costs. You'll have less headaches operationally. And guess what? You'll get happy customers. And if you have happy customers, you get repeat business. Of course, all of this requires technology. Which technology? 